All right, we are going to be looking at the Bohr model of the atom. It is. The Bohr model of the atom. Okay, so Niels Bohr was investigating this, the line spectrum of hydrogen. Now, what I want to do, though, is step back uh, just briefly. There was a guy before Niels Bohr was working on this, before he started working on this, there was a guy named Balmer who was looking at the spectrum of hydrogen, and he figured out that you could actually take and you could, you could fit the wavelengths to an equation. And so there was kind of a, a geometrical relationship between the wavelengths in the hydrogen spectrum. And it looked like this. Two squared, yeah, where n equals three, four, et cetera. So basically, if you start plugging in integers into this equation where n is, you will get wavelengths. You can solve this for wavelength, and you'll get the spectrum of hydrogen. Okay, You'll get the wavelengths that are coming out of the hydrogen gas when it's excited. James. Why is two squared not two squared? You'll see. Because you can actually generalize this equation. And what Niels Bohr did is he, he generalized it. Okay? Now, if I go to Niels Bohr in 1913, he was trying to explain the spectrum. Hydrogen, he was trying to explain the hydrogen spectrum. <clears throat> and here's what he said. He kind of took like, basically what he did is he, he, he basically combined Planck's ideas and Einstein's ideas about quantization of light. He basically combined Planck and Einstein, and applied their ideas to atoms. Or to this problem, I should say. I guess it can be more specific. Now, here's what he said. We'll just kind of break it down to a, a couple of uh, points. One is that atoms, whoops, and we've kind of seen this one before, not in exactly these terms, but atoms can only gain or lose energy. certain amounts. Planck had said basically the same thing. But here's, we're going to go a step further with this. This is because oops. <clears throat> gain or lose energy when electrons change energy levels. Now let me uh, show you what I mean by that. So picture it like this. Here's energy level 2, for example, and here's energy level 1. An electron could go up from one energy level to another in the atom <coughs> if it gained energy. So energy could cause the electron to go up a level. 
and then that electron could go back down to the original energy level if it gave off energy. <clears throat> so the energy, the electron has levels of energy that it can go up or come down, and if it absorbs energy, it goes up. If it loses energy, it goes down. Okay? Now the next step in this reasoning here is when the electron falls from one energy level to another, so when an electron falls, the difference in energy the difference in energy is released as a photon. Okay, so now let's, and there's one more step after this, but for now let's draw a little bit more specific diagram here. We'll draw the same thing again with a little bit more detail on it. If the electron is going down like this, then what's going to happen is a photon is going to come out. Now the energy of the photon is equal to H nu according to the Planck-Einstein equation where E is the energy of the photon, H is Planck's constant, just like before, nu is the frequency of the light. So Here's the basic idea. If I take one of these spectrum tubes, say neon, and I see a red line coming out of it in the spectrum, and I measure that wavelength, I could change that into a frequency, and I could tell you how much energy that, that, elect, that electron lost in the atom when it gave off that photon. So the energy of the photon, let's extend this a little bit, e equals h nu, is also equal to delta E, where this is, this is the change in energy of the electron. Okay, so we'll say E1 minus E2. Change in energy of the electron. <coughs> so however much energy the electron loses, that energy must be given off, and it's given off as light. Now here, this isn't terribly surprising what we're saying here. This is just conservation of energy, so nothing earth-shattering here. Take this thing right here. Okay, here's basically what we're saying. The electron has different energy levels. It could be at a higher energy level or a lower energy level. If it falls, then it gives off energy, just like this does. If this thing falls, it gives off energy as sound. Higher energy, lower energy, but what was the difference? The difference was the sound. The difference in energy, the amount of energy this lost was equal to the sound energy that was given off. Okay? If this were an electron, if I dropped it from one energy level to another, if it fell to a lower energy level, instead of sound, it would give off light. Okay? When this thing falls, when this thing goes down in energy, it gives off the energy as sound. When an electron falls in energy, it gives off the energy as light. How does it get it? In this case, that's a good question. So how did it get boosted up there? In this case, because I was putting 5,000 volts across this, that was enough to pull electrons out away from the nucleus. Remember, they're being held to the nucleus. You pull them out, they're going to snap back. Yes? That's a good question. It actually could be excited by light. So like with the, uh, the vinyl, the glow-in-the-dark vinyl, we shine UV light on it. That light pushed the electrons up. So in that case, a photon went in, the electron went up, then when the electron comes down, it gives off a photon. So it could be light. It could be just even in a flame. Maybe you just heat the element up, and just by collision, they're bouncing each other's electrons. They're, they're smashing into each other's electrons, which gives them energy. And then when they fall back down, they give off light. 
So let's just a quick recap before I go to the next step. Bohr is saying atoms can only gain or lose energy in certain amounts. This is because when they gain or lose energy, what's happening is electrons are changing energy levels, giving off the energy as light, and electrons can exist only at certain energy levels in an atom. Electrons can exist only at certain energy levels. The further they are from the nucleus, the higher the energy. The further they are from the nucleus, the higher the energy. The further they fall, the more energy is released. The further they fall, No, they change. They're not uniform. Good question. So think about this first before we go to that. Um, it's just like similar analogy to this. The, the further, the, the higher up I hold this thing, the more energy it will give off when it falls. Okay? So that's the idea. But picture this. Instead, see right here, I can lift this at any, any level I want. And so it could potentially release any amount of energy between here and here, an infinite gradation, right? If this were an electron, that wouldn't be the case. It might be here, 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 and so on. Only certain levels. So it's more like a bookshelf. So you can picture, Bohr was picturing the atom like a bookshelf. The electron could be here, 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 and the nucleus is at the core. So you're only going to get certain colors of light. So the electron can only fall certain distances, which means you can only get certain changes in energy, which means you can only get certain frequencies. You follow that line of reasoning? There's only certain energy levels, so you can only get certain changes in energy levels, so you can only get certain energies of the photon, so you can only get certain frequencies, so you can only get certain colors. Right? Now, before I move on, why would different elements give off different colors? Why would, what does it tell you about the energy levels in different atoms, for example? Okay, so you could get a situation where some electrons actually have more shells, right? So you have the potential to get something higher in energy. What if I just changed where those shells were exactly? Even if I just took one and moved it a little bit, that would change it all, right? It would change a lot of the energy. So what it, it kind of hints at is that even though there's only certain energy levels in an atom, but different atoms could have different energy levels. And that makes sense because what's really going on here? Energy levels is all about where the electron is around the nucleus, right? What if, for example, the nucleus was a lot stronger, like it had a lot more protons in it? Well, that might be able to pull those electrons in a little closer. Well, if you've pulled them in closer, then you've changed their energies. Just like if I pulled this in closer. Okay? What if I had more electrons in the atom? And it's interesting because... Bohr's model, he made an equation, he modified Balmer's equation, made it a little more complicated, 
and the little n values in there in Balmer's equation ended up being the energy levels of the electrons. That's what Bohr found. He found out that if you plugged in the energy levels for the n values, that it worked. Problem is, it only works for hydrogen. As soon as you move to helium, two electrons, it doesn't work anymore. But that makes sense because now that you've got another electron, you've got something that's changing those energy level structures in there because it's repelling the other electron. Okay, so let's draw a picture. Now this picture is going to be kind of the complete Bohr model. And there's a copy of it on page 380 in your book, so if you have trouble drawing it, you can uh, refer to that. But I want to try and draw it because it's important. You probably did talk about Bohr, yeah. There is a proton. We are going to start with energy level one. Now, by the way, the principal energy level is what we call this. It has a symbol of n, and n stands for an integer, and it can only have integer values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up through 7. Yes? As much as I showed here. Now, the next one is going to be way out. So there's a big difference between n equals 1 and n equals 2. <coughs> and then the question James had earlier, are they, do they increase uniformly? The answer is they do not. So we're going to start to make these closer and closer together as we go out. Four, and I'll just write four there now. If you can't draw this as beautifully as me, don't worry. Um, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. go out to seven. You can get higher than seven, but you have to just in a really excited atom. So <clears throat> now here's what's going on. If you look at the hydrogen atom, what 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 Bohr figured out is this. The visible spectrum of hydrogen is caused by electrons falling from higher levels to level two. These changes give off, they each give off a photon. H nu, H nu is actually our symbol for a photon, Planck's constant times the frequency. That's the energy of the photon that comes out. Photons have different energy, folks, depending on their color. Which has a greater energy, a blue photon or a red photon? Blue. Blue, right. So that is H nu coming out of there. Now this thing right here, is that it for us? Yeah. Darn it. We're just getting rolling. All right, we'll finish this next time.